Is it still a good time to invest in pre-construction? Should you still be buying pre-construction condos, homes, and townhomes, or should you be buying resale from MLS, private deals, things that exist? I get asked this question a lot. So today I'm going to talk a little bit about is it better to invest in pre-construction condos or homes, or is it better to buy resale real estate properties? Okay, friends, Yossi Kaplan here. Your friendly Toronto real estate agent mortgage broker with Search Realty and Search Mortgage. And today I want to discuss about is it still a good time? And what does it mean is it a good time? Does it make sense? Is it a better investment? Which is a better investment? Buying pre-construction or buying resale? Okay, I'm not going to talk about assignment right now. They're kind of like resale for the purpose of this video. Um, so pre-construction, direct from developer, or maybe you're buying resale. Okay, so this is the argument. A lot of people come and say, look, uh, the price of uh, the price of uh, pre-construction went up so much recently. Does it still make any sense where I can get resale cheaper? And, and we'll, we'll, we'll test this in a second. And then they go, well, but pre-construction, I only have to put the 15% down, maybe five this year, another five, another five, and the, the last five on occupancy. So I have some I have some time to stretch. By that time, the price will go up, and then I can flip it and sell as an assignment. Or maybe I can keep it, live in there, have a tenant in there, put my kids in there. That those are that's really typical. So for example, here, um, just to you know how I got here while talking, we go to uh, TorontoCondosForSale.com. Just do it with me right now. TorontoCondosForSale.com. That is my site. By default, it loads the listings, the the um, resale, the existing stuff. We will look at it in a second. And don't let me forget talking about the closing costs difference and then when you go to the menu uh, pre-construction and then there's pre-con list and that is the page okay so just hit that page and then it's going to give you the pre-construction list and by default it's from the newest one upload to the system back and back okay and currently you can see there are lots of pages in the system okay so if you need information about any of these pre-construction condos you're curious about it or just want to know um, hit any of these. Let's say you want to know about M4 Mississauga. This is the M City project, of course. Uh, and then the page will load. Put your name, email, phone. Are you a realtor? Yes or no? And that's it. I get it, and I'll give you a call back. That's the part of the uh, M City. So, for example, M M Condos in Mississauga, around Square One, around where our uh, the Search Realty offices. Absolutely gorgeous. I, I I got to drive on that field uh, a couple of years ago, maybe three even. Uh, when the project just started, I was imagining to myself, oh, this huge, giant structure going to be there. It's its own mini city. You know, it's its own community. It's a master plan community. And that is one thing you have to say for the pre-construction condos and the homes, whether townhomes or something else, is they're better designed. As society, as community, we learn. Okay, We, 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 we just learn. How do I get back out of it? <laughs> I don't know. Um, how do we live better? How do we make buildings better? How we how we adapt the buildings to the culture and the needs? You know, if now a lot of people are going to be working from home permanently, then maybe we need different kind of buildings. For example, you can see developers now putting co-op, co-working uh, um, spaces. Uh, there's more of terrace stuff. There's more of communal design, which I really, really love. Uh, there's more of master plan community that you're looking at. And um, because of the cost of land, the cost of construction, material, uh, work, and of course the developer's profit, you know, these guys are not doing it for free. Uh, the good developers do really well. Um, at the end, in the other day, the price keeps going up and up. And of course, the government, Although they say they're putting all these taxes and this and that, it's like if you really look at it, the government is one of the main, if not the most single benefactor of this construction because of all the taxes it's collecting. And the local government, as the cities, you know, they collect all these, uh, when, you, when you buy a condo, you have to pay all these fees, you know, the closing costs, developer charges, hook you up to the water and maybe to the gas and, and all these charges. And your lawyer will show you all these charges you come to close. Usually what's, that's what the, 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 development caps is it's cap we say no more than so so many dollars per unit one bedroom two bedroom whatever um, but those are additional charges go towards the city and the city gets a park and all these things so the government at all levels is is benefiting obviously jobs not only government we benefit too but understand that 
one of the reasons the price keeps going up is because people make money. And if the price is not going to go up because we live in an inflationary economy, remember we have inflation, the value of dollar over time is always dropping, dropping, dropping. So you need more dollars to buy what yesterday took less dollars. Um, and that is the main reason for the prices going up. Now, the thing is that in pre-construction, the prices seem to be higher even on par per foot, right? We take a square, imagine a square feet, we calculate the price. So let's say Natasha residence is 263 Adelaide, let's say, uh, let's say it came at, you know, 1,200 bucks a foot, whatever it is, okay? So 500 square feet costs you $600,000. Now, you may be able to get a 500 square feet elsewhere, resale, which is the purpose of this video, and by doing the resale, let's look here for a 500 square feet unit, 800, 700, yeah, there's nothing here, but I'll just take this one as an example here. Uh, the price is less than $1,000 a foot, say 950 okay, because I got about 700 square feet and the price is 650 If it was $700,000, divide by 700, that's $1,000 per foot, okay, divide the dollar by the square footage, divide the left number, the dollar, by the foot square, okay, and you get the dollar per foot. Um, if you look at uh, condos.ca, you can make that comparison too, and condos.ca will tell you on the main page what it's calculated as the average dollar per foot. This is 920 in the past 14 days of whatever condos.ca deals it accessed so far, okay? So what's happening is that the resale units, those tend to sell for less dollar per foot than the pre-construction. Wherever you went. Okay? How could that be? Think about it this way. A pre-construction condo is actually risky. Why is it risky? It is, and I'm going to go back to the pre-con list. It is risky because it's not built. You put your 20% in or your 15% in, okay, let's say you're going to spend $600,000, which is not is entry-level point these days. So you need to come up with 15%, 90000 or 20% by the time you get the keys, the occupancy. That's $120,000. That's a lot of money. And then wait three or four years until you get your keys. Now, what happens if the project got canceled? That money sat there. You didn't get, it didn't get to work. What is that deposit money supposed to do? It's supposed to get the project started. And for us, the investors, this is the hook. This is what I use to leverage the other 80% with the mortgage and to get the appreciation of the entire cost of the property. That's the whole idea of real estate investing. That's why we're here. So the risk, okay, what about the risk of I bought something and when I bought it, um, there were no plans across the street, but now my view has been blocked. But if I can walk into a unit, existing unit, and see it, at least I can walk into this unit and see exactly, you know, like even from the pictures, you, you can tell more or less. Um, okay, I'm not logged in, but I'll do it later. Um, you, more or less, you can figure out what the view is going to be like. You can look at the unit, you can see what it's going to look like, you can see if you like the kitchen. You know, you, there's a, there's a videos, there's Matterport, which is the 3D things, okay? So you can look at all these units and see inside. Video, you know, High resolution video, audio, really nice. Uh, nice unit at the Thompson here, by the way. Okay. Now, pre construction, it just renders. I mean, it doesn't matter which one you pick, it still, it, it, it just does not exist. So, your ability to know what it's actually going to look like, you can imagine it, but you can't experience it. And, the, you know, humans love to experience that. We have to see it, we have to feel it. We have to walk our feet on that on that parquet floor, whatever it is, to feel what it feels like, turn the faucet on, hear the water coming down, all these things, okay? And when you look at renders, you do not get the ability to do that. So there is an inherent risk. What if it's not going to be finished? What if it's not going to finish to what I th thought it's going to be like? What if I'm not going to like it? Uh, what if things will change during those years? On and on and on. So, 
logically, one would, one would think that it is better to look at properties that exist because you can see what they are and there are no surprises and you can't get disappointed. Therefore, the price of new construction should be less because it has risk and the price of existing property should be more. And that's what actually, when this whole crazy wave boom of Toronto, which started almost 20 years ago now, maybe 15, 16, that's what it used to be. The pre-construction uh, was cheaper than what existed. People said, well, pre-construction, we don't know these developers, we don't know these companies, we don't know what they're going to see. You build it, we're going to come take a look, and if we like it, maybe we'll buy one. That's what people used to tell us. You build it first, and then we're going to look and let you know how we think about it. And now it's, please, let me buy something in your building. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care which way it's facing. Can I get a higher floor? But people will just take anything they can find because the demand is so high. Why is the demand high? Because of inflation. Because of this. Uh, I pulled the value of Bitcoin just to show you what Bitcoin did uh, this uh, one-year chart. So it starts at 10,500, 12, 14, 15, and then boom. 76, this is, uh, this is in Canadian dollars, 69 right now. So we hit uh, 78, 79. Let's say you hit 80,000 uh, Canadian dollars almost eight times in one year. You will never be able to do that in real life. It's just not possible. But what it does tell you, it tells you that people are looking for a way to put their money. And you can go to the Bitcoin or any coin or stock market, but this thing can be wiped. I mean, can you show it to me? Look at this. Here's the max chart. Unbelievable. Can you show it to me? Can you tell me what it is? This is blowing off the chart 2018. We thought that's like the most we're ever going to see it. No, you can't see it. You can't feel it. It's in your pocket. The only reason this thing has any value is because we believe it. <laughs> That's it. There's nothing else. Uh, the reason that the value is, of dollar is dropping is because you can make more. You print more. You issue more dollars on the computer. Uh, in the case of Bitcoin, for example, you can. It's limited to 21 million coins, in each, but each coin can be split to tiny, tiny, tiny fractions you can, you can buy. You, know, you can buy $1 worth of Bitcoin. It'll give you one div divided by you know, eight, six, this number, but you can do it. You can invest $1 Bitcoin, and, or even the 10 cents theoretically, or one cent theoretically. You know, you can, but you can't make more Bitcoin. And because you cannot make more Bitcoin, it's pushing the price up. Now, guess what? What else can't you make more? Buildings on land. You can't make more of these things, you know? Like, if you want to live in a certain area, you have certain options, and that's it. You can't just drop it like like dollar, just type something on a computer, and what do you know? You issue some dollar. <laughs> Think about it. That's a crazy idea. I like this. This is good. This is buildings, condos, houses, whatever. It's like, I can see it. There you go. You can buy yourself a nice corner here, maybe up there, or maybe by the pool. What's wrong with that? I like it. You know, it, it's old school. No, it's not going to go eight times this year. But you can live in there. You can see it. You can feel it. You got to pay the bills, all that stuff. Okay? You can even swim in a pool. So that is the... There's kind of a, of a disagreement if you will, between the logic of pre-construction that is risky because it does not exist versus this exists, this should be actually worth more because I can walk right in there. But no. Why? Well, there's a few reasons. Um, master plan community is one. Scarcity is probably the largest one. You know, the government can say anything it wants, but the government, remember, the government is making tons and tons of money of real estate. I'm not saying it for the government or against the government. It's just the fact. Every new condo comes, that's development charges, 
and that's property taxes for the rest of the life of that condo, which could be 200 years. You know, how long this building will, this building, you know, they're not going to go bad as long as they're maintained. So theoretically, you can live in a concrete building for a thousand years. Who knows? But what I'm saying is, you know, all these buildings you're looking at now, they will probably exist way, way after us. So you have a lot of choices here. And the choice is the leverage. If you want to leverage, if you want to leverage, or if you want new construction, or if you like the technology, or if you like where, where it's built, or if you just want to invest a little bit, that's a good option. Maybe, maybe you don't want to become a landlord now. Maybe you don't want to become an owner now. Maybe you don't want these... Uh, and I'm not saying this is better than the other. That's just what they offer. These are the options. Now, the assignment, I said I'm not going to talk about it, but I'll say a few things. Um, the assignment is kind of a hybrid. And it's a hybrid because it, it's, it's already been sold, so the, the horizon to completion is shorter than if it was purchased maybe a couple years ago. But it's still, and, and you still have to pay the development charges, the closing cost on it, okay? And maybe, maybe you don't close on the mortgage right away, so that's a phantom mortgage. The, 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 you know, you, you pay, you're paying this phantom mortgage, call it whatever you like, we call it phantom mortgage, uh, until you close. So between occupancy and closing, all in Ontario, that happens. That, that you know, property should close right to mortgage like they do all, all over the world. I, I really don't get that. Uh, and then people go to places like Whitby, Bowmanville, Whitby. Look at all these developments releasing Hamilton, Pickering, Ajax, okay? Whitby, 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 Oshawa, Barrie, Oshawa. So look at these, and you start to see that the new construction, because it's expensive in the cities, it has to pour over. So now it's going when the land is a little cheaper, when the, uh, maybe the cost of labor is slightly cheaper. Maybe the cost of everything is slightly, slightly cheaper to build. And it's probably the cost of land that is, you know, the, the main factor behind everything, obviously. And then if you do the big Whitby project, and you can actually inten intensify and densify an area and take something that was considered, you know, brown land, was not even couldn't even think of living there, but a large project has enough money, momentum, resources to clean up the land. Maybe it was industrial, and there's a lot of industrial lands. I mean, the entire um, <clears throat> East Donlands is industrial land, but now it's all condos, right? So the land was remediated, cleaned, and then built. And now people live there, and it's fine. So you could not have had this opportunity unless you have pre-construction, unless you have new, new, new stuff, okay? And landing condos at Whitby is also very popular, going really, really well. Because they offer lower dollar per foot, maybe in the like under 900, 875 a foot, something like that. So you could pay for existing in Toronto, you're going to pay close to 1200 for some units, and 1500, 13, 14, 1500 or more for pre construction, some of them. But you can go here and get pre construction for less. And that's what a lot of people are doing these days. And they're looking what's around Toronto because they can still get prices that are more affordable to them. So this is how it grows. And the reason the cities are always most expensive is because that's where the jobs are, that's where the people are, that's where the action is, that's where the life is. Now, we'll see if working from home will change that because a lot of people used to live in a city to go to the jobs, which are service jobs in the big um, towers, downtown towers. And then, of course, all over the city. You know, even a small company, 50 people, you think it's not a lot, but if it's not in a tower, then it needs to be somewhere else that needs parking and people drive to it. And it's a huge economic machine just to bring the people to the job place. Now, if we're not going to bring them to the job place, then we need to have properties, residential properties, where they reside and work, which we don't have right now because all of our places are designed just to live. And you go to the office, you go to work, right? But what if you go to work, it's in the same room? 
So we need to see some new things, and we're starting to see these little by little. Don't forget it. Everything is releasing now was designed years ago, three years ago, five years ago, maybe more. So the work from home wasn't wasn't a concept then, but everything is designed today should relate to how can I make this place livable to work from home. And if you can find a floor plan, or I find a floor plan that you can work from home, that's a winner. Okay, so I'm just going to summarize this. The price of the price of resale right here is lower is lower lower than the price of pre-construction torontoconsulsforsale.com menu pre-construction get pre-con list the price of resale is more apples to apples not Toronto to berry for new construction so if i'm going to look at whatever area in the Whitby area here, I would probably find homes which are on average less expensive than this project. That's what this formula says, and that's what it tends to be. Now, if you can find anything per construction for low prices, similar to prices around you, you should really look at it because that would be a great deal. And the reason the pre construction price is higher is because people expect better because there's a shortage of units, obviously. You know, Canada is growing, maybe not this year, but you're going to start seeing you know, 400,000 immigrants a year coming here. Have to, okay? That's our economic, one of the main economic engines in Canada. And you're going to see these things. And the pre-construction will beat, will definitely beat the, um, <clears throat> the resale because people are looking into the future. And also, they can leverage you know, if I put only 5% today, 5% in a year, 5% in, in two years, that's manageable. And then 5% in three years when I get the keys or maybe I flipped it until then. I already had, if I flipped it, great. If I haven't flipped it, I close on the unit. I put my 80% with a mortgage and I live in there or rent it or put a family member to live in there. A kid, a cousin, someone or a good friend, whatever you like. And now you have a property that the tenant is over years, the tenant is paying those 80%, and that's a leverage. You only invested 20 At the end of the day, you still only invested 20%. Now, that's obviously true to all properties, resale too, but the thing with the pre-construction is you invested that 20%, and you leverage it because you waited two or three or even four years on a large master plan project. By the time you get the keys, price of real estate could be 40% more. So let's say you bought a unit at the time for four for uh, six hundred, and it went up by forty percent. That's two forty. So that unit you made two hundred forty thousand, but not over the six hundred. You only put one twenty. Right? You put twenty percent of the six hundred, and then you made two forty. If you flipped it and you didn't put the last five percent, you actually only invested ninety thousand, and you made two forty. That's two and a half times your investment. That's crazy. That's why people do the pre-construction. And obviously, pre-construction is based on the assumption that prices will keep going up. Now, no one knows what's going to be tomorrow or even another minute. And past, like they said in Ivy Business School, so many times they used to tell us that past performance is not an indication of the future. What, what performance you had in the past, it, you can't trust it to be an indication of future performance. You just don't know that. One, Maybe it is, but maybe one day it's going to stop. Okay, so you have to bring this into consideration when you're looking at the risk when you're buying uh, properties or anything really. But remember, the price of dollar is going down. Um, I think the U U.S. is issuing trillions of dollars. <laughs> I don't It's It's so much that you have to ask yourself, what is the value of money? What is it worth anymore? So there you go. It's, uh, it's uh, a lot of people buying Bitcoin. And a lot of people always say, when I make my money, I buy real estate. So I'm here, Yossi Kaplan. My job is to help you invest in real estate through buying uh, pre-construction, assignments, and resale. If you want to see what's going on, go to urbanrealtytoronto.com. It's a blog style. I may change it soon, but there's a lot of crazy information here. If you go all the way to the bottom, and I'm still working on it, but 
There's a lot of these pre-made links. So if you want to see what's the Hamilton pre-construction condo, just hit this link here, and it will open the page from the other side for Hamilton. So here's Hamilton, and here's the database for Hamilton. So if you want to invest in Hamilton or curious about it, that's how you do it. And you can also get prices and information. Where did I go? What's here? Okay, Toronto Preconstruction Condos, Mississauga, Hamilton, Barry, Pickering, Whitby, Clarington, Oshawa, all these exist. If you want to search by price, you go here. You want to search by special search, uh, condos with pools, with gym, low condo fees, on the 500, low, anything you want is here. And the system is pretty accurate. It's not going to be 100% accurate, but it's pretty accurate enough. It depends on what information was fed into the system. The system just makes the query and, and brings back what it can find. If you're curious about selling home valuation, just put in your information, and then it'll tell you, uh, it'll email you and it, it, me, and then I'll tell you what I think your property is worth and what you have to do if you're thinking of selling it, okay? Uh, so that's UrbanRealtyToronto.com, TorontoCondosForSale.com. You get all the resales. It's a very sophisticated site. Uh, I went over it in a few videos, but uh, play, play with it. And, of course, USCKaplan.com, which is another site. That's enough for today. Okay, friends. Thank you very much. Today we discussed, is it still a good time to invest in pre-construction? Yes or no? I would say yes. I would actually say yes. Um, every time we look, you know, I've been doing this since prices were 200 bucks a foot. And every time we look, we say, wow, I can't believe it's going to be 250. I can't believe it's going to be 300. At the end, it just becomes a number and we realize we live in a system that just keeps inflating itself. And that's what I see here. Now, uh, you know, big disclaimer, my personal opinion, you have your own, do your due diligence, but I think it's still a good time. That's why people are buying, that's why we're selling work, that we're sending worksheets, selling condos, homes, and townhomes. And maybe what you want to do is start looking into um, areas which are not necessarily Toronto, okay, and you can use this here. And look what's going on around Toronto because there's, Ontario is big. So here we're looking at Pickering, Whitby, Clarington, Oshawa. Look at these things. There are lots of options. There are more, by the way, but that, that that's pretty good. Probably got like Good uh, two-four of condos here for construction. Okay, good enough. Thank you very much. You'll see you.